is a piece of calligraphy that we had specially done for the Senate. And uh, it's uh, about uh, 22 by 33 inches. Uh, it was done by uh, a, a, a well-known calligraphy artist. This is a mock-up of it. But you can see it's embellished with uh, uh, illuminated manuscript. And it's, it's, it's a statement in Polish, English, and Spanish. And this really is the, the, uh, the, the core of what we're, we're saying. It's, this is a quote of, from John Paul II, June 3rd, 1979, when he was in Poland, his first trip to Poland. And it says, from its beginning, Polish culture bears very clear Christian signs. Polish culture still flows from, with, with a broad stream of inspirations that have their source in the gospel. You are hearing these words from a man who owes his own spiritual formation from the beginnings to the Polish culture. Remain faithful to your heritage. John Paul II, June 3rd, 1979. So that's your first message that you receive in coming to the center. And then we go through, that. now we're going back to 966 and uh, we have uh, paintings, again these are and uh, paintings, stanchions and audio wands that will tell the story of the, 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 the birth of Poland. Uh, the the uh, symbolic birth of Poland in 966 with the marriage of uh, Dubrovka and um, Jesko. Uh, we move through here, Copernicus and the Jangalonian, uh, the, uh, Jangalonian dynasty. I'm not going to hold up pictures for all of these because we're just going to move through this area. This is the, the history of Poland. Uh, we've got the, uh, uh, the, the uh, Polish-Lithuanian com uh, uh, Commonwealth. And then the, uh, 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 the partitioning of Poland. Oh, Tadeusz oh, Kosciuszko. Oh, yes, we've got another wall that's coming about midway through here. Oh, okay. so, so there's a wall coming here and a wall going there. And we, we, we're tracing the, uh, the history uh, of Poland in brief snapshots up until uh, 1854 when uh, Father Mochigemba writes a letter and invites his family and, and, and others to come to Texas. But I will point out one thing, because at your, when you're at this point here, we're, 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 uh, we're highlighting the different, uh, the different milestones of, uh, of culture. Uh, this one happens to be the Baroque period. Uh, but we also have, here we have the Gothic period, and then we have the Romantic period. I'm sorry, then we have the, uh, uh, the Renaissance period, and then the uh, Baroque period. And uh, above you, here, about here, 11 feet by 7 feet on the ceiling, is a painting. It is actually in the village of Bazug, in, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but it's called the Allegory of the Christ. And uh, this is a, a, a painting in a church. It's actually on a, on a slightly rounded flat surface. It is Trumploy. And uh, we had a photographer go and take a picture of it, take a photograph of it, and now we're gonna take that and we've retouched it, we're gonna blow it up on the ceiling the way it would be in that church. So you're gonna come here and you're gonna look up and, and the painting is going to be on the ceiling and internally eliminated. Mm -hmm. Others of those graphics that I that I didn't uh, that I didn't show, but uh, Tadeusz Kosciuszko, another another painting. Here's Tadeusz Kosciuszko uh, leading his revolt uh, against the Russians, but also highlighted are he as a as a hero uh, in in the American Revolution. Uh, uh, honored with, uh, with monuments and statues uh, around the country in Chicago, but certainly at West Point, and also a squadron during the Battle of Britain, named in his honor the Kosciuszko Squadron, which had more kills than any other squadron in that fight on either side. Uh, the Partitions of Poland, which will include a little movie, which will show the animations of how that happened. Of course, uh, Frederick the Great, uh, 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 Maria Theresa of Austria, uh, 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 Catherine the Great of Russia and uh, uh, Hans Joseph of, uh, of, of Austria, the uh, three protagonists in the partitioning uh, of Poland. And of course, it would end up no longer existing for quite a number of years, 122 years, I believe. Uh, another graphic, we'll talk about the Silesian Wars. These are uh, parts, uh, actually part of the uh, War of Austrian Succession, but what's unique about it is that uh, the, uh, the region of Silesia, this very rich, uh, uh, area that had belonged to uh, other uh, uh, kingdoms was now carved off and given to Aust given to uh, 
uh, Prussia from, from Austria. Uh, the uh, Commonwealth, the uh, Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the uh, siege of Vienna, and of course the winged war, the winged hawsers, the uh, Polish ca the famous Polish cavalry, the uh, the Gothic period, the Renaissance period. I'm out of order, but uh, I just wanted to show you some of the graphics. Nicholas Copernicus, who changed our whole view of the solar system. The letter from Father Muchigemba. And so here it is, the, the letter arriving and the families reading that, uh, reading that letter and making their decisions that they'll leave their homeland and go to... Uh, and go he to, didn't tell them about the rats next. What? Didn't talk about the rattlesnakes. Not at that moment. Not at that moment. We will. We'll get there. No, he didn't tell them. Oh. He didn't tell them. No. He didn't open up about that. So now we're going to go around this corner. Uh, well, I, mm. This wall comes out. There's a wall around the other side. goes back into that area. And when you're around on this side of it, you're looking. The... Uh, Letter from Father Machiavelli is here. The Institute is here. You turn the corner. There's another wall here, and this is a wall that will, uh, you see here. And I'm going to explain what this is a little bit. But this this wall here is what we call a lenticular, and what that is is it's uh, it's it's two paintings or two photographs on a, an accordion stripe, so that when you look at it from one side, you see one thing. When you look at it from the other side, you see another. In the middle, it's a little bit abstract. And there's a little, uh, there's a little uh, point or shelf that comes out. And on that shelf are three trunks. And in those trunks are belongings that these people might have brought with them. And uh, a stanchion, right here, a stanchion. And that stanchion is very long, and it has three interactives on it, three interactive stations. And those interactive stations are touch screen. And when you access it, you'll be able to access the names of the families that first arrived on, West, on uh, the Antoinette, or Antoinette, however that is spelled. We have two spellings for it. And the Yaberland. Uh, these three were the, were the three first ships that came into Galveston with uh, uh, burying the, uh, the immigrants. And we have the manifest, so we're able to display the manifest. And when you access that page with the manifest, you'll hear those names we will, we will tell you those names. They were often misspelled. Why? Because spelling hadn't been standardized, one. Oftentimes they were illiterate. Uh, so the, the customs agent would write their name down the way he thought it was. And uh, so many, 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 many reasons why they were misspelled. But they were, many, many of them were misspelled. And the Silesian Profiles Committee has gone through these names very, very carefully and spelled them properly. So what we'll do in our graphic is when you touch that name, you'll hear the name, even though it's misspelled, and then we'll morph it from the misspelling to the proper spelling. So you'll see what it was spelled like when uh, they arrived and what it should have been. And then you go to another screen, and it's going to be all of the immigrants' names who came from 1854 to the 1890s as profiled by the Silesian Profiles Committee. And each of those names will be read by a narrator. So she'll read like maybe through the A's and then through the B's and C's. So you can just, stepping through it, you'll hear it. You'll hear how the names are pronounced. And you know, for those who aren't of Polish descent, that's going to be an epiphany. Well, that's why you say that. It's, you know, it, it is. It's a long name, and you kind of try to sound it out, and yet when the narrator says, oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, it will also tell you a little bit about those immigrants. What happened on the voyage? Did someone die? Were they buried at sea? Uh, how many people came? Did they have children? So all that information is just in a little snapshot on, this, on these interactives. And there'll be three stations, so three sta people can be accessing that information at any given time. And the sound is very localized, so only you standing at this uh, station will hear the sound. People next to you will hear. Because it won't interfere with others. Well, not to interfere with others. Very low points. So all of the sound, like in the other room where I said the monitor, very low points. Uh, and of course, the wands are just a, a personal experience. So you could be listening in English. Person next well, to you in Polish. The, you could be, yes. On the, on the wands. Right. Uh, all of the interactives and all of the movies are in English only. Right. We're not going there. However, the names are said, will be said by our Polish narrator, so you, everybody gets a, a proper pronunciation of the names. What did you call that accordion wall again? It's a lenticular. 
Lynn, Lynn Chicken. Will it be one It will be a poll. Regular poll. We'll talk about the, 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 the dialect. We talk about the dialect, but uh, because we have visitors coming from Poland. <laughs> they, they speak the like this. No. Yeah. The, it, 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 it isn't. We're, we're using some pieces of the dialect. Use the dialect as our translation language. It's going to be Polish. So, uh, here along this wall where the trunks in the foreground. No, we won't be able to understand it. Pardon? We, as Poles, they won't be able to understand it. I understand it. Yeah. Okay. No, it's. I want to hear it in Polish. You will hear it in Polish. Not you won't hear it in Polish. I'm sorry. No, see, no I'm sorry. Not. I'm sorry. You will not. It will be in Polish. Okay. So, here's the lenticular. And so, viewing it from, from this side as you approach, you'll see uh, the storm clouds and a, and a, and a, and a farm and a, and a farmer's field. So, this is what they're leaving. They're leaving behind. They're leaving behind their their their, their homeland and, and their and their way of life. As you walk past it, it abstracts. It goes into an abstraction. And then as you're on the other side, you see the chapel in the Golden Woods. And this is what they are also leaving behind, but this is also what they're taking with them, is their faith. On the back side of this wall is the land they left behind. And so what this will be is all these images that we collected and, and, and had shot in the region of Upper Silesia, they will all be lighted. They will be lighted little light boxes so it will glow. Uh, there will be a, a quotation here. Uh, there will be a, a film here. And there will be a, uh, 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 an exhibits case uh, built into the wall. The exhibits case will have uh, historic maps of the region. And uh, uh, the movie will tell the story of, of the evolution of uh, the region of Upper Silesia and these people uh, retain their Polish culture. And then we're going to go around uh, the corner here and we're going to, on this wall, we're going to see them leaving. They're getting on the ship, they're leaving, they're going away. And what is in incorporated with this is a lighting effect where uh, will project onto you and onto the onto the painting a water texture, and you so you become part of it. You're immersed in it. You're part of the the, uh, uh, the graphic, and you'll hear some sound effects like seagulls and the water and uh, and some uh, some sea sounds uh, as you as you approach it. And then there will be a stanchion to the foreground, and that will tell uh, a little bit of the story. And then you'll also have an audio uh, experience. And then you will turn the corner going this way, a bit, of a, a bit of an angle, and you get them leaving or arriving in Galveston, Texas. And this will be a two-part graphic. First part, there'll be some Texans standing on the dock watching them arrive. And then there'll be another piece which will show them going off on their trek to San Antonio. And in association with the uh, uh, them arriving, and, and what you see are, are people laughing and a little bit in shock, and they were. They, they, they mocked them, they made fun of them, they, 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 uh, short they said, dresses. They had for the short dresses and for the way they spoke. Uh, they were, certainly weren't Germans, and they were called Polanders. Uh, and, uh, and so anyway, they had, uh, we have a little dialogue, a little uh, dramatization of dialogue where, where you get the sense of, of how it must have been for these people to be laughed at. And then uh, as they go on, on the trek, you hear ox cart sounds and, and, and the Mexican teamsters uh, cracking their whips. And you hear a little boy say, Dad, I'm hungry, I'm tired. And the dad says, yeah, OK, kid, you can ride in the wagon with your grandfather and the baby. I'll walk, Dad. So you know, I mean, it's just little moments that uh, give you, you know, try, try to bring you into the, the, the spirit of the, uh, of the story. Are we there? Uh, are, the, are, we are, there are we there yet? <laughs> <laughs> so they arrive in Panama Maria, and then their first their first experience is to be gathered under the great oak and have their mass of thanksgiving. And again, as you see in this drawing, uh, there's things going on in the back wall. And this is again one of those projection elements. 
uh, will be projecting uh, light and, and leaves and, and as if light is trickling through the leaves from their torches. And you'll hear cracklings of torches and you'll, you'll hear the mass being said in Latin and you'll hear a little bit of the, 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 the Christmas carols being sung in, uh, in, in Polish. And then as you see uh, above uh, the next graphic, which is called Getting Started, you see above, that's the overhead projection. So here's where we're projecting in the, in the plane above imagery that supports the, the idea. And then uh, the one that we just talked about, the, uh, the arrival, here they are being mocked, and here they are uh, walking off into, uh, into Texas to their home and future home in Panama Maria. And above <laughs> is uh, overhead projection. Then they arrive, and they live in holes in the ground, and uh, their crops fail. They drought, it's a terrible, terrible time for them. And uh, here is where we bring in the rattlesnakes. And so projected above here, uh, along with the imagery, and you'll hear it, you'll hear the tick, 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 tick. We'll have a, an image of a rattlesnake striking out of the screen, actually. So we tell that story, and we'll have the rattlesnake tick, 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 and strike out of the screen. Uh, not a real one. Uh, do, you know but, that, do you know that the rattlesnakes have quit ticking because their um, hogs, while well, hogs are killing them, ah. they don't rattle as much anymore. They did then. I know. They don't <laughs> anymore. Yeah. They evolved. Well, yeah, that's not good news. No, it isn't. So they, uh, they no sooner uh, recover from drought, and they are now a part of the American Civil War. And uh, many of the, uh, most of the, uh, of the uh, immigrants' children, and young men, uh, are conscripted to the Confederacy. Uh, some chose to fight on the Union side. And uh, one in particular, Peter Cobasa, was captured in battle and chose to uh, take a deal and become uh, a Union soldier, rose through the ranks, became a captain of uh, colored or black uh, Union cavalry and saw action uh, throughout uh, uh, the war, uh, retiring in Chicago and becoming a politician. But here we see, the uh, uh, on this side, we see the, the soldiers going off to war, and then here we see them coming back uh, after the war. And the, the center figure is, uh, is uh, an encampment of Peter Cabasa with his uh, uh, black cavalry. So the time after the war is the Reconstruction period, and that's when the, when the re uh, resurrectionist priests arrived. Uh, these gentlemen arrived in 1866. Texas was not a good place to be in 1866. Many places in the South were not. Uh, Reconstruction was, uh, was a wild and very violent period. And uh, the uh, uh, Anglo townsmen near the Polish communities preyed on their, their Polish neighbors uh, because they were different, because they spoke a different language, and because they, in their minds, they weren't uh, loyal to the South, and they had changed sides. So uh, these people were, were preyed upon by their, by their neighbors. So along come these, these, these uh, Resurrectionist Fathers uh, from the Congregation of the Resurrection in Rome. They were all Polish. Uh, they were previously Polish military men, one of them a general. Uh, they had fought against the Russians. Some of them had been revolutionaries underground and spies and gun runners. And, and now they arrive in, uh, in Texas, and they, uh, it is said, uh, ministered to their, to their flock with a rifle in one hand and a rosary in the other. <laughs> and uh, so you see in the background, I know it's faint and probably hard to see, but, but we, we show some of the violence that was visited upon uh, these, uh, these, uh, these people. And then we see them after uh, they finally, the things finally settled down, they could go back to doing <clears throat> what they were supposed to do, which was uh, minister and preach and educate. That's what their role was. But they first they had to kind of settle things down a little bit. And as I said, language is, is, is very important, but, uh, and uh, uh, language was actually taught in the school. It was uh, upon the insistence of the, uh, uh, of the uh, people from the region of Upper Silesia that uh, the Silesian dialect be included. However, uh, the teaching aides were all in Polish. And uh, so really, the language that became part of the education system was Polish. It wasn't, they didn't teach the dialect. That was spoken at home. Uh, and uh, again, uh, children coming to school 
uh, all the way up to the 1930s, many of them didn't speak English. They, they had to learn English at school. Uh, they spoke. They were failed too. Many were, but they, and I remember Joe Diamond saying it was the most difficult thing in the world he had to do was learn English because he wanted to be Polish like his dad. And so anyway, uh, the Blue Sisters is another aspect of the, uh, of the story, the first uh, uh, congregation of, of Polish sisters. And then education in general, important to uh, all of the communities. And uh, just the story of the, of the Polish language, we see the, uh, uh, the, uh, the English language uh, alphabet above, and then the Polish language with all its didactic marks. English has none, Polish has many. So it's a, it's a very, very different language uh, to what we... Did you um, uh, highlight the Felicians and the Our Lady, the, uh, the Sisters from Incarnate Wars? Did you highlight those as being educators? We do. We okay, have, great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not as part of the image, but as part of the story. Okay. Uh, so this is just the story of, of education being important, and, and uh, then we move on to the, the what, what is this dialect? How does this... So this is another graphic. It's accompanied by an audio wand. And uh, see in the background, we just see a lot of, uh, of accented letters and changed letters, German letters, Polish letters. Uh, because the uh, Polish, the, the Silesian dialect of Polish is influenced by Czech, by German, by uh, uh, High Polish. Uh, so it's, it's, it's all of these languages a little bit influence the language. So here we let you uh, listen to different uh, Stay, phrases like welcome, enjoy your visit, what's your name, please come again, in Polish, in Czech, in German, and in the Silesian dialect of Polish. So you can hear uh, the differences. We have these large posters, education posters that you may have seen in the museum at uh, Pan Maria. Uh, they, we have four of them on display. And we will, and our narrator will tell you, will, will, will sound out these these sounds for you. So when you look at it, you'll hear it, hear how these sounds should be sounded out. And then we acknowledge on this little uh, rectangle here. We tell you when these posters were used, and we acknowledge if you want to see these are mock-ups so, or, or, or reproductions. And if you want to see the real one, you can go to the museum and see the actual poster is there. These are uh, again reproductions. Those are standing, freestanding out here. We go to the back of the room, and long graphic. Uh, here, the uh, uh, a graphic with just hundreds of images of the immigrants from uh, very early times up until today. And accompanying this graphic is uh, a little movie about expansion. How did the uh, uh, the Polos advance and, and expand throughout Texas, and what towns did they populate? So it's the same message basically that you saw in the lobby, but it's told again with the names uh, and, uh, of all these various towns that, they, that uh, Polish people settled. Uh, at the center is a, is a temporary exhibit space right back here. Uh, that is under construction. Uh, I won't go into the detail on that now, but that's a, something that we're working on right now. And then to the right side is another series of images. These are black and white images uh, by the photographer uh, Joe Jaworski who did his uh, thesis uh, at the University of Texas. Uh, and yeah, you remember. Uh, we're going to have your picture up there. With your, I'm going to be there. You're going to be there oh, in your wedding dress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> anyway he, uh, he, he, it's a brilliant series. It's, it's, it's really beautiful. It's all black and white. It's very rich. Uh, and it's the, it's, he went and, and, and photographed for uh, a couple of years, coming back in, at different times of year, and photographed the, uh, the community. Uh, and uh, he, he had access anywhere he wanted to go. And it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful series. Uh, integrated with this, it's a, it's a movie and an audio. T. Lindsay Baker, the historian uh, uh, extraordinaire of this uh, migration. He's a Fulbright scholar and a Fulbright lecturer. Uh, he's an author. He wrote the seminal book, uh, The First Polish Texans. Uh, and uh, he, we filmed him here in Panama Maria, going from place to place, and Joe. Uh, and so we have this dialogue between the two. Joe from the uh, early 1990s, late 1980s, uh, and, and late 18, uh, 1980s, and uh, we have uh, 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 T. Lindsay Baker, uh, who was here in the late 60s and early 70s, so there's a different perspective on Pan Marie at the time. And we walk through town and we get the dialogue between the two, the two and it's a, it's a wonderful little story. Uh, 
As you cross now, we're, we're back in, in, in this area and we're, we're about looking at the back side here. Uh, the uh, Deloshi and Healing's Venture story is there. And now we've got another story here, about here, before we go into uh, another area there. And, <laughs> and uh, And this is the story of the brands. And uh, so we have these, these brands of the early settlers as compiled by the Silesian Profiles Committee. And we uh, have redrawn them and uh, added the, the, the appropriate names to them. And this graphic will be what you'll uh, encounter. All of the brands will be three-dimensional, mounted out, pinned out from the wall, with, of course, the cattle and the water feature in the background. And to the foreground is another long stanchion, like we saw at 3.7, or the families. It has three interactive stations, and those interactive stations will allow you to access the, each of the brands by family name. So you can go through and touch here, and the narrator will tell you that's the Burda brand. And then there'll be a story that we've compiled about the Berta brand, when it was registered, who registered it, uh, what the family produced on their farm. Sometimes it will be an adventure story of Indian attack. Uh, sometimes it will be a simple story about they had 3,000 big, uh, because they, you know it's just a they had a very simple life. But uh, each of those stories will be have, you will have the opportunity to have it read to you, or you can read it yourself. If you push listen, you'll listen, you'll hear it, and, and it, again it'll be localized sound. And then you can go back and you can try another one. On the youth, we give them a story. We say, find this one. Find the one that looks like a mule running. Find the one that looks like a key. Find the one that, you know. And we just have them observe and find something uh, with the audio stop. We don't expect them to, uh, to engage with the, uh, with the uh, interactive. And then we turn the corner here and we enter into uh, this uh, area back here. It is composed of... Church windows with a picture of the uh, of the church and a picture of the interior. So it's each of the core parishes, every one of the core parishes, and they line the walls going along here. It's a darkish space, so these are internally illuminated. They'll feel like uh, 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 stained glass. And there's a little story, a written story, as well as an audio with each of them. It tells you a little bit the history of that particular parish. And there's. There's one for there's there's one for each. Uh, Saint Hedwig, uh, Pan Maria, Bandera, Yorktown, Kasuchko, Chestahoa, White Deer, uh, and if I missed one, I'm sorry. I call I'm not going to go through it in detail. <laughs> but then along this wall, as you go to the front stage, are those parishes that are no longer extant. These are only remaining thing here is a cemetery. And so that's uh, Saint Michael. It's uh, St. Joseph, Inez, and Las Yeah, Inez, Las Gallinas, and, and Myersville. So those are, the parishes are no longer there anymore. And then we turn the corner from that space and we exit out here. And now, it's the story of the five Mochiana priests on this wall. So this is uh, all five of them lined up together. Uh, there's an audio stop that tells you about the, uh, uh, the vestments and the, and the different uh, colors and why those colors are, are appropriate to the different liturgical seasons. And then you turn from here, directly here. And it's the uh, gifts to Polonia from Pan Maria. And that's this graphic. And uh, what it includes is St. Stanislaus Koska, the Roman Catholic Union, which was established in 1873, and the Polish Seminary, which was approved in 1879 and realized in 1885. And uh, the, the, the men, the people from the Pan Maria, who are most influential in these organizations being established, are Peter Kobasa, uh, Father Brzezinski, and uh, Father Leopold, what you get. And so the story tells you about uh, how they were involved in the establishment of each of these really primary Polish communities in, in Chicago. And one thing you may or may not know, uh, 
early on when uh, Peter Cabasso was there, uh, there was no Polish priest in Chicago. Poles were beginning to arrive. They liked it a little better, the, the climate maybe a little better uh, than, than South Texas or other places they had tried. But when they first arrived, the first priest to minister to the needs of the Poles, Father Leopold. What a connection. So, you know, and in fact, St. Stanislaus also, because the uh, Congregation of the Resurrection was at its headquarters in Panama Maria at the time, had to report back to Panama Maria. So just, you know, this, this, this uh, center of Polish culture really uh, has influenced uh, uh, Polish culture throughout the United States. There was a, we were talking at one of the meetings about uh, where is Panama Maria in the middle of nowhere, and we're going to call it the center of everywhere, of any, everything. Yeah. <laughs> then Polish, yes. <laughs> I mean, it, it just happened that way, you know? It just turned out. Um, but I mean, all of the other communities created their own uh, yes, but uh, a place as well. Uh, so we, 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 we've done the uh, influence of the, uh, uh, of the uh, of Panama Maria on uh, Chicago, and now we come up to contemporary Poland, and, or more contemporary Poland, and this is World War I. So what's happening in World War I is uh, uh, the United States goes to war, uh, Poland, uh, as a result of the war, becomes an independent nation again, uh, in influencing uh, 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 Woodrow Wilson uh, on his Polish policy, his Poland policy, and his 14th point was Ignacy uh, Padowski, a, uh, a Polish uh, uh, patriot, politician, and concert pianist who was living in the United States and had the ear of uh, Wilson. And he, in fact, uh, drafted that 14th point, did the, did the rough draft of that for Wilson. So, uh, and that rough draft says that Poland will be an independent nation with access to the sea in Gdansk. So, what was the result of the war? Uh, there were some uh, revolutions. Uh, in the region of Silesia that resulted in it being fractured again, some going to Germany and some going uh, to Poland. The interesting aspect of that is that most of the people in the uh, cities who had voted for uh, returning to Germany were returned to Poland, and the people in the rural areas who had voted to be in Poland were sent to uh, uh, Germany. So the League of Nations got it wrong, but uh, nonetheless, uh, that's what happened. Uh, and what happened with uh, with the uh, uh, with the Polish soldiers from, from the region here is that they were exposed to a whole new world. They were no longer in, in their insular little Polish communities. They had seen Paris or whatever, and they were, they were changed. Uh, they now understood that the world was perhaps larger than they had thought it was. And uh, then we turn from World War I to this aspect here, uh, to this point. This aspect here, and this is World War II, and the, the uh, uh, of course the, uh, the statement is "Deliver us from evil." And uh, what happens to Poland uh, is that on uh, September 1st, 1939, Nazi Germany invades uh, Poland. World War II has begun. Everybody declares war on Germany, and then on September 17th, the Soviet Russia invades Poland. Nobody declares war on Poland. Soviet Russia. And the Germans and the uh, Soviets meet in the middle and divide Poland in half. There's a line that goes down there, a, a, a crack that goes down through the middle of Poland. It's divided again. Again, what happens here is that Polish Americans uh, are fighting for the United States. Our war didn't begin until December 1941. Theirs began in 1939. Uh, here we go through a threshold, and uh, to our direct front is a, a graphic that tells us about the, Venice, the Polish Renaissance in, in Texas, uh, and we'll come back to that. But along this wall is a 22-foot-long uh, graphic that tells the story of Poland post-World War II. And so this is a very complicated graphic, uh, but what you see, uh, there is there's overhead projection above it, and uh, of course audio lines and, and graphics that support it. But going from 1945, under the influence of, uh, of the Soviets, until uh, John Paul II's visit to Poland in 1979, and in 1980, Solidarity was born. 
Uh, so what you see happening in the graphic, it's, it's dark and foreboding on this side. John Paul arrives. The, the light begins to shine uh, in Poland. And uh, we see, of course, uh, uh, Lech Walesa, who's a very uh, influential uh, leader of the Solidarity Group. And then we see him becoming president of the nation of Poland as we exit the uh, as we exit this And then the Renaissance of uh, the Polish Renaissance of Texas, which is in the center of this backspace over here. <coughs> and so here is what's happening in Texas. Uh, well, in Washington and Texas in 1963, uh, 66, 66. Uh, uh, President Johnson uh, invited uh, members of the, Pol the Polish community in Panama Maria to the White House for a presentation in the Rose Garden, and uh, an icon of Our Lady of Chesahoa was given to the church in uh, Panama Maria. Uh, an event was held uh, after, uh, a few months later, and that icon was brought into uh, the church and it's still there today. Uh, 10,000 people came to this event, including President Johnson's daughter, uh, Wagner Carr, and uh, uh, numerous other dignitaries. It was, a, it was a big, big event. But what this marked was the beginning of, an, uh, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a renaissance uh, of Polish culture in Texas. And Bishop Yalto, and a priest, was in the middle of it, uh, as was, uh, help me with the... Uh, 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 at the uh, well, I don't know, but at the time. Yeah. Father Matula was here. Yeah. No, it's uh, the, the the priest who made the shrine. Colton. 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 But it was a, a, a rebirth of, uh, of, of, in, of, of, of the Polish culture, which had... Uh, being Polish, yeah. Pardon? Of being a Polish. Of being Polish, again. Yeah. And then, uh, if you go behind this uh, uh, graphic, which has artifacts associated with it, we have some letters from uh, uh, the family and the archives that we'll put out. And then along this wall is John Paul II arrives in, uh, in San Antonio. We have a movie that's associated with this, but this is the, the meeting in San Antonio. Uh, and uh, John Paul II's uh, visit. Again, uh, Father Yanta in the middle of it, in the planning of it. And then on the, the back side of the uh, Polish Renaissance in Texas is a story of uh, Bishop Yanta. And we have a movie that's associated here. We actually have footage of his ordination. Uh, here in Pat Maria, under the Great Oak. And then we turn the corner back over here to another back wall. And here we have the preserving of Polish culture. And it's the, uh, the Polish American Priest Association, which was established in 1970. And it was Father Goebbels and uh, Father Colton. And uh, uh, we're all involved. The first meeting. Uh, was in Santa Maria and, uh, at, the, at the church in, in Santa Maria. Uh, it was a Texas organization when it started, and now it's a national organization. Within a short period of time, it became a national organization, but it began here. And then as you exit the last graphic that you're going to see, anyway, <laughs> anyway as you, this, this wall that's coming out uh, from the exit door here is the reconnection. This is reconnection, so the people going back uh, to Poland to reconnect with their, with their roots. This is a large case, goes full length. It has all four versions of the Silesian profiles, version one, version two, volume one, volume two, and the two translations, as well as a photo of Bishop Yonda presenting a, a translated version to John Paul II only months before his death. And there's a movie associated with this as well. And as I, as I, as I told you uh, earlier, we had the opportunity to go to Poland and we, and we captured these moments, uh, and uh, after uh, we have been out uh, in the field one evening, we came back and we asked everyone to come down into the, uh, the, the courtyard of the hotel we were staying. We set up a little, a little studio, which was a place to shoot people. And we had each one of them come up and tell us what, 
was your favorite moment? What was your most important moment on this visit? And we filmed it. And so we've got a selection of those interviews uh, where people say, gosh, my most important, my, my, my favorite moment was going to the town you know, where my grandfather, my great-grandfather, my great-great-grandfather, my, my grandparents were married in the church. And, and it's just got these wonderful little thoughts, these wonderful little stories uh, of going back and reconnecting with their, with their Polish roots. <laughs> and then you ask them, you know, so, <laughs> that's it. Does anybody have any questions?